Hey, what's going on YouTube? Aura Storm here with another deck profile today talking about Valon Boxers for, with Post World Superstars. Now, if you didn't already know, this is one of my favorite decks. I've taken it to multiple events and I've in, and I've basically tried to build it to at least be out know, reasonably compete with some of the meta. Obviously, I don't it's not the deck still has some problems, but I I just really enjoy the deck. The deck profile, I'm going to try to make it as quick as possible. I'm also going to talk about it, uh, but however, at the end, I will have a a little combo, quick little combo tutorial showing two basic bread and butter combos of the deck, including showing off some of the new cards. Plus, at, at certain points, I will talk about cards I don't play and explain what you might swap out if you like to run them. So anyway, if, uh, and, uh, without out of the way, let's get to the deck profile. So first, the first eight cards I run, are, this is pretty much the bread and butter Valon Boxer lineup, so three Lash Doll, three Switch Hitter, and two Headgear. Um, no matter what build I've ran, I, this has always been in the deck. Like, this is basically a recycling engine, and this is your Wolf Bark. Headgear, you don't really ever need it more than two, because you don't really want to draw it, and it's one of those cards in Yu-Gi-Oh, like a, a lot of cards, where it kind of claw. It's you don't see it enough at one, but it clogs at three, so that's why. That lineup, no matter what, it's pretty standard. And for the other two, two four battle and boxer monsters, I run two shadow and two counterpunch. So briefly, I'm going to talk a little bit about shadow. Basically, you, during your main phase, you can special summon this by detaching an XYZ off of your lead yoke. So basically, basically, typically you're you're going to do, you want to detach glass jaw so you can add a switch hitter back, then normal summon it and special summon glass jaw and push for big damage. I run counterpunch. At first, I wasn't running them, but then I did some thinking and realized like this deck loses like hard to Winda. So Counterpunch gives you an out to Winda, and it, it can also get you over towers because you can you can normal summon your glass draw and then crash into towers with um, Counterpunch. So if you're dealing with towers, it helps with that. So for the other non battle and boxer monsters in the lineup, I run Triple Mask Chameleon and Double Photon Thrasher. I like I like Mask Chameleon at three because it I want to see it as often as possible, and even though obviously it's searchable, but with Barrel Imp King, but it's basically like my rank four and level eight synchro toolbox. Do I need a, whatever? It gives me whatever I need access to and gives it quickly. Do I need Castell to get over, to get over like an annoy or one hundred one to get over an annoying monster? Do I need do I need uh, Ragnar Zero to pop to pop a um to pop a pop a monster that's buffed by Tinky? Do I need Karen Gorgon to keep some of my stuff from getting MST or my lead yoke compulsed? Or even do I need a level 8 Synchro like Stardust or Thought Ruler? This card is just amazing. I really like it in this deck. As far as Photon Thresher, it's an ideally card to open with. You can also run Goblinberg, but you have to run one or the other because you want to make sure you have five targets for this guy. So, like, I like both cards. I like that I can get Headgear's effect when I special summon this and still make a rank 4. But Goblinberg can get dead chameleons out of your hand and allow you to make more than one, put more than one Synchro on the field in a turn. So... It depends on which which cards you like, but I'd recommend either or if you insist on running Mask Chameleon like I do. That's all the monster lineup for some of the spells. It's two, I have two Dark Holes here and three Reinforcement of the Army. Don't really need to talk about Rota. I like Dark Hole in this deck because it can buff off your lead yoke. And you know, like I said, Rota is like you're going to run Rota. Like you want to make sure like if the entire deck pretty much is searchable searchable with uh rota except for the chameleons and those can be searched off of feral limp king so for the next five cards i run two forbidden lance and three mst now i'm gonna talk a little bit about lance lance is a mandatory card in this deck in my opinion because it keeps your lead yokes and some of your monsters protected because this deck is still pretty vulnerable to back row removal like compulse um deep prison stuff like that we don't want those cards ruining our day. Plus, there's that new Mirror Force coming out, and that this deck just really doesn't want to see that card. So, Lance. And then MST, you feel free to run it at two if you so wish. If you insist, you can always swap in other cards, like tech, like maybe if you want to run, say, like other cards, like maybe Summoner Monk, Goblinberg, etc. Instead of MST, feel free. And for the last couple cards, there's two copies of Kaiser Coliseum and one Soul Charge. I love Kaiser Coliseum in this deck because... It just opens up, it keeps, it slows down the game state and keeps, and basically keeps my opponent from spamming the board. In some ways in this deck, it's a bit better than Vanities, even though Vanities is chainable, especially when people are cutting down their MSTs, this card just gets better the less MSTs are in the format. And I like Soul Charge because I run Thought Ruler Archfiend in the extra deck, and 
If I run over enough monsters, I just don't care about soul charging for four cards when I've got like 15,000 life points. And then that's all the monsters for these spells. Two, or tra traps. Sorry, I need English properly. Uh, two jolt counters and two fiendish chains. Jolt counter is the new counter trap. Basically, to an extent, as long as you control a battle and boxer monster, you can use this card during the battle phase to negate a spell trap or monster effect. So as long as you control a battle and boxer monster, and you, and you can control other monsters, it's not like secret technique. During the battle phase, you can pretty much do... So this gets over annoying hand traps, uh, stuff like Honest, um, Kalut, Crane, stuff like Necros of Valkyrius. This card deals with them. Fiendish Chain is just for... It's it's better than ever right now. Fiendish Chain has always been a good card, but it just getting stopping your opponent from attacking, negating effects is quite nice. And then the last two non-one-ofs are to Call the Haunted. This basically allows me to continue uh, my plays if I only have one monster in my hand, but I have something in the graveyard. I can simply Call the Haunted it back and continue going. I really like that card. And I play four one-ofs in the form of Solemn Warning, Torrential Tribute, Bottomless, and Vanities. Solemn Warning is good because I still like this card, especially with all the Pendulum decks that are going to be coming out in Cross Souls. This card's just going to get better. And I do play, like I said, I play Thought Ruler, so like 2,000 life points isn't the biggest payment in the world if I'm using that. Torrential is really great because you can flip, you can, when you summon your lead yoke, if your opponent has a bunch of monsters in the field that don't like being destroyed, you can just summon your lead yoke, chain Torrential, and then they've, they've got an empty board with a 3k beater to staring at them. And then Vanities, because... It's pretty much staple at this point since it's limited on the limited list now. A couple cards I don't run in the main deck are Effect Failure and Mistake. I'm not the biggest fan of Effect Failure maining this because I feel like it's subpar in so many against so many decks. It's great against Rogue and it's all it's it's really good against Necros, but other than that, like it's not. I, I, this comes from a point of love. Effect Failure is one of my favorite cards, but I fear like it belongs in the side sides and mistake i feel that it's subpar against a lot of de decks like it's i mean it should always don't really i don't want to main deck a card that's only useful for you know a few i want i'm not going to freak out and doing that main deck that just because necros are a thing so now i'm going to go into the extra deck i'm going to try to make it as brief as possible like i said for the battle and boxer exceeds we run two lead yoke and two nova kaiser nova kaiser's effect basically reads as follows when he is Basically, he can attach a Balan Boxer monster to himself, succeed material once per turn. He also gains 100 attack for every Balan Boxer monster, or for every attachment. So when it dies, it gets to special summon as many Balan Boxer monsters that are level 4 as are attached to it. So the, the cool thing about this is that you can use this with, in conjunction with Lance to see what, see what kind of back row your opponent has. Granted, it's only by opponent's card effects. You can't pop this with Scrap Dragon or like use something like, say, Circle of the Fire Kings and get his effect. It kind of makes me sad. But it would be pretty broken if that was the combo. And I only run two Lady Oaks because when I get... Kai Nova, I've noticed in doing some testing on DevPro when, when, with these cards is that when I do get Nova Kaiser's effect off, I, what it ends up happening is that I'll have a Glass Draw and a couple other monsters in defense position and... That glass draw is just gonna sit there. Why not? And they and they attack into it. I'm just I can just put lead yoke back in the extra deck. So I feel that kind of that's the best ratio. But if you think you need that third lead yoke, feel free to run it. Now for some of the staple uh, rank fours, you know, obviously like we have Dweller, Castell, Evil Swarm, Exiton Knight, and 101. Uh, Dweller is still pretty good because there's a lot of graveyard effects. We have Burning Abyss, Shuttles, Castells good against like decks that cards that you that you don't want that have annoying graveyard effects when they die like dante the should all fusions exiton knight's good when you're behind and you're obviously going to run it like it's when you're behind you're down 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 life points this card this card's great 101 i like it because there's some cards i don't want to give my opponent access to again like for example if i'm playing something like hypothetically something like noble knights if i just Castell away their um, Arturgus, they can just remake it next turn. I'd rather 101 it and force them to do, deal with the issue. So it's one of the reasons why I run still like 101, one over 101 and one Castell over over just two, running two Castells. And for some of the other uh, rank fours, generics, uh, King of the Feralumps, this guy is here to search your chameleons typically. In this deck, I always open with this. Ideally, you want to make this first turn pretty much every game. I always make the joke joke called Judge because he always gets stuck in my extra deck and my main deck when I shuffle after went after the game. Ragnar one Ragnar zero if zero 
are these i feel like you can also run excalibur these cards are pretty interchangeable like ragnar zero is here more for burning abyss and it's pretty good against um fire fist especially them they've got three spirit again i like excalibur over blade armor ninja because even though rank seven decks aren't, aren't a thing anymore big eye is a this deck is incredibly vulnerable to big eye and i'd rather have like, something that can instantly just punch straight over big eye if it's an attack mode rather than having an excalibur rather than having a blade armor ninja that's useless in my extra deck so that's why i run ragna zero I'd, I'd rather run that but anyway so then one karen gorgon like i said this is card is just keeps your lead yoke it protects it keeps your they try to break through skill your lead yoke you can chain it and do it to this it basically like deals with all those annoying targeting cards that they might try to use to get over your lead yoke that's all the uh xyz's for the synchros i'm just going to throw up all four of them so I run one Stardust Dragon, one Thought Ruler Archfiend, one Scrap Dragon, and one Crimson Blader. So Stardust I like because we have so many destruction cards running around. Mirror Force is more popular than ever. Dark Hole's at two. Regeki's at one. A lot of people are main boarding all those cards, so that's why Stardust, I still like it. Thought Ruler, basically, if you don't know what this card does, basically every time it runs over a monster, it gives you life points equal to that monster's original attack. Also, if they try to target a Psychic-type monster, that's this guy. With a spell or trap effect, it you can negate it. Pay it, you can pay a thousand life points to negate it. So I really like this card. If you know your opponent's running a bunch of annoying targeting back rows like Phoenix Chains, Breakthrough Skills, stuff like that, this card's basically you can pay a thousand to mute him and just prevent it from happening. It's pretty nice. One Scrap Dragon because you can use this and target your lead yoke and pump it up. And also, if you maybe if you have a 101 on the board as well, Crimson Blader I like it because it's good against so many. It prevents so many high level decks from from playing Yu-Gi-Oh! and I really like this card it just it helps it just it's really nice so that's all the that's pretty much the entire deck profile so briefly through the magic of editing I will have a quick simple li simple little uh two little tutorials explaining like some of the bread and butter combos all right we are back so now I'm going to show off some of the basic tutorials of the deck so typically I, an ideal opening is this is pretty much what you're going to do i do like 99 percent of the time so typically you want to open with these two guys or mo so like what you'll do is you'll special summon thrasher normal summon headgear use headgear's effect and typically like you're going to dump you know like a glass jaw of course but if you want you can also dump a you know you can dump but you, you can also dump a counter punch if you so wish then you're going to overlay into feral limp king it's feral limp king's effect and search a chameleon basically and then next turn and then set some back row pass typically that is 99 like 99.99 percent .99 of the time i open with that combo pretty much everyone's that's the bread and butter combo like you're gonna you always typically want to do this with this particular build i always tend to open with that combo combo so there's not really a lot of explanation next turn you can normal summon mass chameleon use chameleon's effect and special summon and from there you've pretty much got everything from synchro plays to rank four plays pretty much anything you need so it's one of the reasons I I run Mask Chameleon because like that's pretty much the bread and butter combo with this particular build. You're going to open Mask Chameleon. You want to get your Mask Chameleons in your hand as quickly as possible. Now for the OTK combo I mentioned previously. So basically the combo is going to require. Our, we're going to have we want to have Balan Box or Shadow in our hand and we want to have a Lead Yoke on the field. So basically we're going to have a Lead Yoke on the, in this situation. We're going to have a Lead Yoke on the field with a Glass Jaw attached and a Switch Hitter in the graveyard. Now. There, so the basically what we want to do is we want to make put an OTK on the field, and that's what we're going to do because I'm going to so like I'm first thing I'm going to do is activate switch hitter, activate shadow's effect from hand, reveal, and then detach this and special summon it. Glass shadow's effects is going to trigger, trigger, and then yoke's going to buff himself up, so it's going to be like chain link one, chain link two. You're going to add that switch hitter back to your hand, you're going to normal summon that same switch hitter, use his effect, special summon a glass shadow from your hand, and then. That's an OTK right there. That's well over 8K of damage. You've got 15 plus 18, that's 33, plus 38 is, let me do some math real quick. Uh, I think it's 61. I think it's a total of 8,300 damage. I could be wrong. I, my math's not very, I, my math's not great. But basically, this is a, this is the a very simple combo for you just to mash the board with and put in a more well over 8K of damage on the field. It's pretty dang good, good. It's, I think it's I think it's total is 91, but I could be wrong. But basically, that's one of the new, with this card that allows you to make makes put in put an OTK type thing on the field. So 
So basically, that's one of the things I really, really love about Shadow is that it just it gets it gets what you need. It gets the job done. Like it puts in it fixes the deck breaker's problem, which is putting damage on the board. So anyway, guys, I'd like to thank you all for watching this video today. Really appreciate it when people watch my videos. Tune in on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays for more Yu-Gi-Oh content. Also, follow me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash AuraStorm43. If you'd like to watch me play Twitch, typically my streams are on Thursday afternoons from 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. p.m. Sometimes I might start a little earlier depending on what's going on, but tune in there. Also, if you like what you saw from this video, please subscribe. This is AuraStorm signing out.